All right, we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. Um, I 3D printed this little uh, Groot character. Um, it's a model off Thingiverse. I'll put a link down in the description. And uh, I'm going to paint it. Um, I've, I've never really done this kind of painting before. When I was a kid, I built models and stuff just like everybody. But um, I've never tried to, to paint anything that was supposed to be well, lifelike's the right word, right word when it's a made-up character. But um, either way, it should be interesting. Um, I don't know how well this is going to go, but I'm going to give it a shot. So to start off with, I'm going to uh, hit it with some filler primer, and uh, then I'm going to go to town with the paints, and, and hopefully it doesn't come out wrecked. But it's a really nice little model. For anybody who's uh, wary about getting into 3D printing because of the cost, um, this was printed on a, a printer that cost 150 bucks, and was subsequently dropped off of a table and then rebuilt uh, by hand with, you know, handmade parts, um, you know, no CNC, no laser, nothing, just using regular woodworking tools and whatnot, and it still prints this quality. So if you think you can't afford to get into 3D printing, um, <laughs> you can. I did have the option of printing this as one piece, but I thought this would be easier to paint if I could um, mount these independently uh, for priming and whatnot. So I'm going to hit these with some filler primer to hopefully get rid of any little bit of resolution lines that are still there. The print's actually pretty good, but a um, little bit of lines that are there, hopefully that'll fill them in without losing, hopefully, any detail unnecessarily. And, uh, yeah, let's give it a shot. There we go. I'm probably going to have to do several light coats on this. I'd, I've never done this kind of painting before, but I do watch a lot of videos about this kind of painting. So I'm not going in this entirely blind, just completely unpracticed. And, you know, what you think you know and what you actually know really tends to play out differently <laughs> than you might expect. Oops, I thought that was recording this entire time. But it wasn't, so I put a light coat on here, a um, little bit heavier than you know light, but um, I just kind of continuously went around with light coats until it had fairly decent coverage. Um, you can see there's some lines in there that I'll need to go in and sand out, a little bit of Z-wobble, but nothing too bad. The, uh, the texture on here actually reads wood really well. So um, I'm going to set this aside, I'm probably going to hang it here, and then uh, I'll paint the head, and then I'll come back. Um, and paint this after a, a couple of touch-up uh, sanding spots. And I'm going to kick on a fan, let those dry, and uh, be back in a few. Some raw umber. We're going to use this as the base coat to get a nice dark brown underneath and then we're going to lightly brush some lighter colors on top. I'm going to use kind of a rough brush here and um, try and keep the you know lines up and down so it looks like wood grain and uh, we're just going to wing it, honestly. It should also be noted that I don't know what the hell I'm doing, so you should probably not listen to any of the advice I'm giving you. And this thick paint is going to fill in a lot of the gaps as well, just like the, um, the primer did. Which is why we took it a little bit easy on the primer. Sort of smoothing a vertical texture in here to help sell the whole wood thing. And I can already tell you, it may not be obvious from the camera, but the fact that this was 3D printed is already completely lost. You would never know this is 3D printed at this point. There we go, I think we have a brown group.
All right, we're gonna pick this back up again in the morning and uh, go from there. The green highlights really made it pop. And to be pretty happy with the way this is. I'm going to um, go in with some glue, and dab it into some of the low spots in here, and then add um, some moss and some grass. There's also some uh, kind of vines built into the model. And I'm going to touch those up with green, hit them up with some glue, uh, and then um, add some vines uh, or some moss and some grass to those as well. And then I'll paint the eyes, and I think I'm going to call it done. I was going to do another uh, wash of the umber, or rather a wash of the umber, because I haven't done one. Um, but honestly, I like it the way it is. And honestly, um, you know, most of every, everything I know about doing any of the stuff I've gotten from uh, model makers and prop makers and things like that, other channels that I watch, but they have a tendency to really over weather things because on film, they have to be over weathered to be able to see any of the detail at all. But this is going to be viewed in person and in person, this looks pretty good. So, um, I'm, I think I'm not going to do the other wash plus that just feels like pushing it. <laughs> like I'm flirting with disaster if I just keep adding paint to this thing. I could conceivably use my flocking gun for this, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm basically just treating this like glitter and whatever sticks, sticks and whatever doesn't, doesn't. So I just get some fine little grassy details in there. I think we are going to add just a little bit more to this. I don't think it was really necessary to water down the glue, honestly. But this time we're not going to. This is for um, designed for doing model trains, and I have absolutely zero interest in model trains. But I used to have a friend when I was growing up that was really into them, and um, I used to like building the scenery. I thought the scenery was really cool, and so I would help him build the scenery, and then he and his dad would play with the train. I'm just gonna hit some of the low spots where I think maybe some moss might have grown. Maybe just a little bit around the neck here, too. I don't want to overdo it. It's easy to overdo details like this. And suddenly, it goes from being a little detail to really in your face. Okay, final detail is going to be the eyeballs, I think. I think we're down to that level. 
uh, eyeballs I'm going to do in a gloss black. And then depending on how well that plays, I may also, oh, let me go rinse this out. Um, I may also um, add some clear over the top of that. I also painted earlier the inside of the mouth with a flat black. Uh, I think I may have been off camera when I did that though. Alrighty, final step. Uh, what are the odds I'm gonna screw everything up? Right on the last little bit. I think this character's like really gonna come to life once the eyes are nice and shiny. Always paint top of the thing because these testers paints don't label the outside. Well, they do, but they label it in this little micro print and you can't tell. So the, being able to tell the difference between the flat and the uh, gloss is almost impossible unless um, you paint a dollop on the top because inevitably, if you've ever done any model painting, these end up covered in paint. Um, it's just a matter of time. Oh, wow. difference. This stuff levels pretty well so I might be able to get away with just doing the gloss instead of having to also do a clear over the top. The less of this fine work I have to do the better, right? Oh, son of a... I literally just put my finger right in his eye. He managed to smear a little bit. Okay. I'm going to very gently tip this back and let it dry. Just like that. And then We'll inspect the eyes afterwards and see how they look. I think they'll probably be okay like that. I would like them to be a hair smoother, but we'll see how they come out once they're actually dry. I'm pretty happy with the way this little guy came out for my first. This is the first model kind of thing I've really painted since I was a teenager. And I never did anything that was supposed to be like wood or life. You know, I made the same models that all little boys make usually. <laughs> Cars, battleships, airplanes, that kind of thing. Normally I put a like kind of vignette filter on you know my a lot of my videos and I'm not doing it here because I want to accurately show what it looks like. The moss, the little bit of green highlights. Up here I obviously went heavier because um, the actual character has um, more green right on the top, like almost like a crown. But I gave it just a little bit of green highlight. It's almost imperceptible and you know, hit the edges a little bit stronger with the airbrush. And that really sells the wood look. So if you're painting something that you want to look like wood, my advice would be use at least three different colors. Um, I used uh, raw umber as a base coat. Normally, you know, often for models and whatnot, you use black. Uh, this raw umber um, looks a lot more like wood. Then the two colors I used, and these are just, I literally just went through the model aisle at my local hobby store and found a couple that looked good. Um, this is Model Master's wood and Model Master's leather. The wood made it a little bit too light and the leather knocked it down with like a warm sort of, well, leather color that just looked perfect. Um, the eyes are just done with gloss. I wanted to clear coat those on top of that. Um, I thought I already had some uh, clear coat, but uh, I don't. So I'm just going to leave it as the gloss black for now. I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. And uh, it, worst case scenario, I can always um, add some later. So I'm just going to leave it as is and I may throw some clear coat on there eventually but I don't really want to mess with it. It shouldn't look too perfect. If you make anything look too perfect, it looks fake.